Hello, welcome to Dry Creek Beekeeping. So today is the last day of the beekeeping season, for me at least, in my area. The forecast suggests that we will no longer be having days where I can get out to beekeep. I only really like to beekeep when the temperatures get above 50, and there are no more days like that in the foreseeable future. So that means that today is the day that I need to move both of my hives, the alpha hive and the beta hive, into the beekeeping tent, which I built in my last video. Link to that video will be in the description. This might be a long video because it's a very long process in order to move these hives into that tent. And as I do it, I'm going to be taking a very close look at both of the hives. So, starting with the alpha hive here. Doesn't look like very much is happening today. Yeah, looks like they're already starting to slow down. This is just the Varroa mite strip, and I'm just going to remove that. I don't have any use for that anymore. Now, I just need to get these girls down into the frames, and then I can remove all of this extra wax off the top of these frames. We don't really want any um, excess propolis or wax going into the winter, because that can um, affect how the frames were designed to function during the winter. All right, there we go. Now taking a look in these frames here, I'm not actually gonna remove any of them today. I can see that there's plenty of uh, honey stores. So now I'm just going to set this box off to the side for a second. Now, if you're ever gonna do this, please note that these Hive boxes are extremely heavy, weighing as much as 50 to 80 pounds. And now here's just the lower box, and you can see there is a lot of bees here. And surprisingly, I actually still see a few drones, which is very strange, since typically uh, all the workers of the hive will kill off the drones because the drones just eat honey and they don't really do that much during the winter. I can still see some very young bees, surprisingly, every now and then in these frames, which the reason that's surprising is because this late in the year, I wouldn't be expecting them to make new bees. I would expect that all of the brood is dead or removed. All right, and now I'm just gonna take the entire lower half of this hive and set it off to the side once again. Now if you're going to do this, another thing that you should note is that this will make the bees extremely, extremely mad. Like I cannot explain enough how mad this will make them. Alright, and now all that's left here is just the cinder blocks on which the hive once stood, and also some scattered wax and dead bees. Apparently this is where they put all their dead bees. Usually they fly them off somewhere, but I guess this hive decided just to stash them under, under here. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take these cinder blocks here, and I'm going to move them into the beekeeping tent. All right, now that those are gone, you can really see how many dead bees there are. This is probably a good, oh, I don't know, an inch, half an inch above the normal soil level, level here. That is a lot of dead bees. All right, now what I got to do is move this into there. They are mad. All 
don't know if you saw that there, but when I opened that hive, a ton of them just came flying out. They are mad. I better go get the smoker before this gets out of hand. Now that both sections of the hive are in there, all I have to do is put the lid on and they are good for the winter. All right, the Alpha Hive is officially set up for winter. Now you may be wondering why I have them facing uh, this direction. It's because it is the opposite direction from the way the sun rises, so that way they sleep in longer and use less energy. And also, it is pointed downhill so that any moisture that gets in can get out. Now, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up, but there are a lot of bees flying around here. And the reason is, is that they aren't used to their hive being in a different place. So they're all flying around kind of confused. Don't worry, they will figure it out before too long. And that's another reason why I'm doing this in the morning so that they can get to their hive before it gets too late. All right, now this is the beta hive. This is the next hive that I need to move. Now, this one is probably going to be a little bit scarier getting into there because there's already a bunch of alarm pheromones around from the previous hive getting moved. So these guys are gonna be significantly madder. Now, Immediately, once again, I'm not seeing many bees, which is fine. Ah, oh, there they are. I see a few in there now. Now with this one, I do want to take a look at a couple of frames. Also, once again, of course, get rid of all this excess propolis and such. And that is my first... Uh, sting it looks like didn't get through my glove thank goodness but it's a sting nonetheless like i said they are going to be mad now this hive has been causing me problems all year because they don't seem to want to uh, do well and you can see that some of these frames still don't have anything on them which that's not ideal because that means at some point this winter, I'm probably going to have to come down here and give them a little bit extra food so that they can survive. However, the frames that do look good look very good. So that's a plus. All right, and here's that lower section of the hive. And Again, I'm going to take a look at this simply for the reason that this hive has been very slow and I haven't checked on this part of the hive in, well, I suppose about half a year, so maybe a little bit less than that still. And these, these girls are very angry. Of course, not exactly surprised that they're angry. I mean, I am moving their entire hive. Oh, geez. Yeah, so you can tell that these lower frames don't have as good of honey stores. Um, otherwise, I can see that there's still some brood left, so that explains the young bees that I was seeing earlier. I'm definitely going to have to uh, give these bees extra food later on in the winter season. Well, I wasn't able to catch this on camera, but I just watched a mouse come out from under my hive. That was horrible and that is the last thing that I want to deal with. Because if I have mice in my hives in the winter, oh no. That right there, mice, are a hive killer. I've, I've heard horror stories from people who've said that they've had to just, just throw away their entire hives after a mouse got into them. So that's not something that I want to see.
All right, and I, ha I definitely have a huge swarm of bees around me. Here is uh, the hives now. I just have to put the lid on them. To help them calm down a little bit. And then something that I often do when bees are very mad is just smoke the air. It doesn't seem like it would do that much, but it just masks those um, alarm pheromones and helps them to calm down. The light wind will also do a decent job at that as well. But after doing this today, I am going to have to wash my bee suit because otherwise my bee suit will smell like alarm pheromones and then whenever I beekeep, the bees will just get really mad. <laughs> All right, and here you can see the cinder blocks and more importantly, where that stupid mouse came from. Right down here. You can see all this stuff. That's a mouse nest. Also a couple woolly bear caterpillars down here. I just leave those guys where they are. They don't do any harm. All right, now all I gotta do is the same thing that I did with the alpha hive. Move these into the tent. Something that I saw that I didn't really like to see while moving these cinder blocks was some wax moth larvae, which I didn't see any signs of them in the hive, but under the hive meant that if my hive got weak, those could get into my hive and completely destroy it. So I'll be watching out for that. All right, now both of my hives are in the tent, and honestly, it's, it's kind of sad because pretty soon here, I'm not going to be beekeeping anymore for like three to five months. It's November now, so the beekeeping uh, typically restarts uh, March into April. So it's always sad to see the end of a beekeeping season, especially one that was not very fruitful with the drought that we had and the decent but honestly pretty small honey harvest. I really just hope that these hives survive the winter. Because if not, I mean, of course I'm gonna continue beekeeping, but these were some really, really good hives. They were by far the most gentle hives that I've ever had. So, I guess we'll see them next year, hopefully. It's gonna be weird doing an outro without any hives here. But to recap what I did in this video, I moved my hives, both the alpha and the beta hive, into my beekeeping tent over there. And honestly, it went a lot smoother than I thought it would be moving my hives into the tent. I mean, I know that last year I had a pretty aggressive hive and that took me about two hours to do. And it only took me about one hour to move two hives into there. Now. Since we're going into winter, I won't be uploading beekeeping videos like this anymore. Well, at least until next year. I am going to try to keep doing weekly videos, but I don't know if I'll be able to do it. If nothing else, then I will go for bi-weekly videos. Now, what I'm worried about is my hives won't survive. That's always the main worry during the winter. But this worry is bigger than that for me because the past two years, my hives have died from ventilation issues. And that scares me because what if it happens again? I'm already in debt with beekeeping as it is and n having my hives die would just, it would be devastating. However, I am trying my hardest. I am doing everything in my power in order to keep them alive. So hopefully this winter is different. Well, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video and you wanna see what happens with my hives next year, then please make sure to subscribe and also like this video. See ya.